What's up, nerdlings? What's up, nerdlings? Hey, do you nerd for MCC? That is Missouri Comic Con. Hey guys, I'm Jazz of Nerdy Blazing Cosplays, and you're watching Do You Nerd? Welcome back, nerdlings. I'm Tom. This is Lady Lacey. This is Do You Nerd, a variety channel of all the things that we love, including toys, video games, board games, comics, and conventions like Missouri Comic Con. This was their first convention in Springfield, Missouri. I believe I overheard that the company that put this on, they've done other conventions in different areas, but this is the first one in our town. Yes. So they went to a local hotspot for conventions. Mm -hmm. uh, the, it's called the Expo Center. So we have got to see this place in action before hosting other conventions. Yes. So it's always kind of neat, a little fascinating to see how somebody else sets everything up and how they utilize that space. Because in all honesty, that Expo Center, there's a lot of space, but some of it's kind of partitioned off a little yeah. weird for conventions, unless you utilize each space for specific things. Now, one of those weird spaces is actually where they had the entryway set up. So that's a pretty large area anyway, and they had it mostly sectioned off for like lines to come in and everything. But the thing that was really weird about that was behind a curtained wall is where they had the stage set up for the panel. When you have all those people coming in to get into the show, it did make it a little harder to hear some of the panels. If you weren't in the first couple of rows, it became a little harder to hear those. The other thing is that room isn't designed for something like that, so the walls weren't padded, There was it wasn't set up for audio, and they did the best they could with, you know, bringing in their own audio sound. But in other conventions, they've done them downstairs in the convention hall where it uh, does have the acoustics built for, for something like that. Look in the box. Don't you want to know what's in the box? That was kind of my biggest complaint too, was just kind of where they put the main stage panel room. And the only other time that that, where they had their stage set up kind of worked against them was the cosplay contest. And I think because they underestimated how many people love yeah. to see all the amazing cosplayers, because wow, that was packed. Pretty standing sure room only. <laughs> every seat was taken. Yes, standing room. I mean, the walls yes. were just lined with people because everyone wanted to get in there and see the awesome costumes. Other than that, though, I mean, the stage itself, it worked really well for the cosplayers mm -hmm. to come up, present themselves, yep. and then move along. That went really quick, so that worked out really well. <laughs> Keep in mind, next year, people love to see the costumes. Sorry, Mario. The princess is in another castle. My biggest actual complaint of the entire convention, but this was the first time we've ever had to pay for parking. And I know some of you people are going, pay for parking? Well, you do that everywhere. Well, here in the Midwest, we don't pay for parking. <laughs> it's all free. Every single parking lot downtown, it was $10 to park. And so they were charging you and they've never done that before. So that was my biggest complaint. <laughs> and to be fair, I mean, before it sounds like we're being too bougie about that, even people that were working for and volunteering for the convention were being told to pay for yeah. parking and they weren't happy about it. So when yeah. the people that are working and volunteering for your event aren't happy with having to pay for parking, yeah. I feel like that's speaking a little more volumes maybe than uh, just your attendees <laughs> have to pay. On the bright side though, holy smokes, this place was packed yes, to the was. brim. Pretty sure their Saturday tickets actually sold yeah. out well before Saturday yeah. even began. And let's face it, when you have that many celebrity guests coming to town, I mean, people want to get in there. They want to get their photo ops, get their autographs and everything. There was no shortage of celebrities on hand too. So that was very cool. And I really think it helped to get people in through the door. Mm -hmm. And that is only going to make things even better for the vendors. Because when vendors see that kind of traffic, they're going to want to come back next year. And that is what helps your convention grow. Plus, all those people coming in for the cosplay contest, to see the cosplay, to be dressed up. That was great. I, yeah. I loved seeing how many people there were for a first year show. And I think there were a couple of people that were surprised it was their first year because uh -huh. of that kind of yeah. crowd. The other thing that I thought was kind of nice was typically when we go to conventions, Saturday is the day that the cosplay contest is. So that's when you see all the costumes, everybody's dressed up. 
Then Sunday, you don't really see a whole lot of people dressed up. But this time, Sunday, there was still a lot of people dressed up in cosplay. So that was, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. Good point. On that note, too, the second day, a lot of times conventions, you'll see it really winding down. Maybe some vendors will be leaving, travel times and everything. So those tables will start to empty out. The second day was just as vibrant oh, yeah. as the first day. And almost so, just as packed. Yeah. If you <laughs> missed out on the first day, you weren't shortchanged for the second day at all. Speaking of all of these vendors, you did manage to find a few things that you love. I did. Despite how busy and packed it was, I managed to... <laughs> squeeze my way into some of these booths and uh and buy some things much much to your dismay oh, i know <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like how come we lose so much money when we go to a convention i don't know parking <laughs> we'll start off with the legos that i picked up he's just this pumpkin head guy that says halloween town and i'm not sure if he is or not but i'm going to say he is and i don't care what anybody says out there he's from one of my favorite halloween shows halloween town i picked me up a nice korg because you know he's always fun and and I really felt bad that he lost his revolution because, you know, he didn't print enough flyers. So I'm going to print him up some flyers. Spider-Punk, one of my favorites. I absolutely love Spider-Punk, especially in the game. I always liked when you would like do one of your moves and it would like a wow. I was going to add, <laughs> I think Spider-Punk in the Spider-Man game was one of my favorites as well. I got a little Doc Connors here, some lizard. So that was kind of fun. Look at his little claws. Rawr. I got claws. Rawr. So I got a really cool zombie Captain America from the What If series. I like getting all the different Thor figures and he is really interesting. Beta Ray Bill. The next thing I picked up just because it looked weird and I don't know anything about it, but I got a white Darth Vader. Is he like a ghost? I don't know. I don't know if he's a ghost or if he's like going to make him a Christmas one, but then forgot. I don't know, but he's cool. Jason from Friday the 13th part 7. Sorry, I like getting the, the horror ones for oh, you. That's sweet of you. <laughs> you guys remember back, because you're loyal viewers, I know you are, when I got Bruce Wayne, Batman as a mermaid, right? Sure. Sure. So who doesn't want Bruce Wayne, Batman, and a pink tutu? Poor Batman. <laughs> They'll put him in anything. <laughs> eh, he doesn't seem too upset about it. I thought that was cute. I had to get it because I have a new obsession. But I got a little Puchita, and to go with it, his little partner saw man. <laughs> I thought that was super cute. And the last Lego figure I got, a blue and yellow dinosaur that he can open his mouth and you can set things on. So every time we go to a convention, they always have the bigger Lego figures, whether it's dinosaurs or King Kong or uh, some cars or whatever. So this time I decided I'm gonna go home with one because I always regret not doing it. So I got this really cool blue and yellow a uh, big old dinosaur. Rawr. The next thing I picked up was some really fun little totes here. And I just really, really, this one caught my eye from far away. I loved it. I love all the little characters on there. Love the Moogle and the Tonberry and the Cactar and the Chocobo. Really cute little friends. And she had a deal going on. So I got two little coin purses. And I just thought this one with the mouse and the like pumpkin teapot was just super cute. Of course, I love dragons. So you love your dragons, you love your Halloween, and you're really loving all of the cutesy characters from the Final Fantasy games. I mean, this woman had your number. Yes, she she did. And my credit card. She has your credit card number? Oh, no. <laughs> Tom was super generous and let me pick out and bought me a Squishmallow <laughs> and I got to pick out whichever one I wanted and I picked out this sushi with the shrimp on his head because it's cute. Those That whole series of plushies are super adorable and this one, the sushi one, wow. It's it's like cuteness overload. It really is and they're so squishy. That's why they call them Squishmallows. Uh, that is why they call them that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we got our first piece of official Dragon's Brook merch. Yes, the Renaissance Festival closest to us is no longer Dragon Fest, but now their new name is Dragon's Brook. And I love this. It's a Frisbee. So uh -huh. their, their merch, their little business card is a Frisbee. So yeah, just fly on out to your Ren Fair. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's worth a fling, I think. I don't know why I bought this. 
but it caught my eye and it was fun to play with. It was just this weird like octopus thing, octopus keychain. I'm pretty sure you don't know why you buy two thirds of the stuff you buy. Did you get one already? I did. It catches my eye. That's all I needed to do. But it was just fun to play with its tentacles. So, you know. <laughs> like I mentioned with the Legos, I have a new obsession with Puchita. So I had to get a travel size <laughs> Puchita, you know, because my other plushie that I got is big and this one is smaller. I can take it with me places. That's cute. I, I like that you focused on having a travel one. That's my that's my reasoning for buying of it. Of course, what if he's a little bit too big? Well, then I got a keychain of him <laughs> in the rubber style, just in case that other one's too big. Has it even watched the anime yet, guys? I will. The dog is so cute. Well, one of the things that I picked up, actually the only thing I picked up. Uh, there were some like games and stuff that I was kind of eyeballing. There wasn't really anything that I needed, but the booth that had those games also had these fantastic Four Swords links. Unfortunately, he did not have the green one, but we did get blue, we did get red, and we did get, what is that, lavender link, yeah, I guess? maybe. But I love how expressive they are in their face. Actually, each one has a slightly different expression yeah. if you take a look at them. And they all come with their own sword and shield, which is great. I'm very curious to know if there are other items that you can get, you know, standard Zelda items, because it would be great to give each of them a different item instead of everyone having a sword and shield. But uh, hey, you gotta add to that 1000 Zelda collection, am I right? Yes, and we'll be keeping an eye out for the green one to have a complete collection. There's this really cool booth there that made a bunch of leather products and um, drinking horns and drinking vessels. So I've actually been eyeballing these anytime we go to the Oklahoma Ren Fair, but it is a horn mug, drinking horn mug kind of a thing. But they had a really good price for them and this, I just really liked the pattern of this one and it seemed to fit my hand really well. So I picked me up a horn mug drinking vessel and I will actually use this, not that I won't use my toys, but you know, something practical <laughs> that I didn't feel, you know, so weird with. And I actually surprised you, didn't I? We were looking at a plushie and I, there was about like 10 bucks more than this cup. And I said, I think I'd actually rather spend the money on the cup. She chose a cup over a plushie. I know. I don't even know this woman anymore, guys. <laughs> But don't let that fool you. She still got a plushie. I still got a plushie. <laughs> it was just a different plushie. This plushie I actually went back for the second day and I made a beeline for the booth the minute this place opened because I saw him the first day and I was like, oh, he's super cute. But then I put him back and then I thought about him all night long and I was like, okay, we have to go Sunday and make sure he's still there. You need to understand this is literally what she wanted to come back day two for. The only reason. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> It was the only one there were two blue llamas and this was the only one that had the leg things or alpaca excuse me he's just this really cute zombie alpaca that has you know some flesh missing in certain areas so and these are from palpaca and they are limited edition they only make uh, 500 of each piece wow that is limited yeah so. and i don't know if i should be like overtaken by cuteness or a little bit horrified that he's a zombie and he's got like fleshy bits showing that's okay i still love him <laughs> all right well once again a bunch of weird eclectic pickups it just goes to show all the more reason to hit up your conventions yes. because you never know what you're going to find it could be a cool collectible that's going to a fuller set such as zelda stuff it could be some zombified plushies or an ensemble of lego characters it could be a practical drinking horn for the next time you're going to a ren fair it could even be your latest obsession for an anime you haven't even watched Which yet but travel you're size. sold on the merch as is also, wanted to give a shout out to Missouri Comic Con for working with us. Uh, we made some promos for them, so I hope you checked those out. Hope you check out the video. We've also got the cosplay contest and the Hocus Pocus panel because it was uh, the, the three figures yes. that we had there all at one time. So give those a watch. And thank you, Missouri Comic Con, for coming to our town. Congratulations on your first year. Hope to see you again. Guys, support your conventions get out there day one year one be there at the ground level and watch them grow from there 
Leave some comments down below. Hit up the links in the description. Don't forget, subscribe, notification bell, and Lady Lacey knows the rest. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Go over to the Retro Refresh because we have a pretty cool website over there. Check out our merchandise on TeePublic. And if we like it, we nerd it. I think. This sushi's calling my name. Like, like some sushi sounds really, really good right now, doesn't it? Huzzah! Huzzah! Bye, nerdly. Bye, nerdly. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're Kept trying to track you down at Tremendicon, but you were speedy. Yeah. Every time I'd be something, they're like, he was just here. And I was like, well, dead gum it. A little fascinating to see how somebody else sets everything else. One of the... <clears throat> And then to go along with Spider, I got Doc Connors here, little lizard man. Not lizard man. Why did I say lizard man? So I got me a wonderful zombie spider. Spider man. Spider man on the brain. Mm -hmm. I got me a lovely Spider man. <laughs> Monkey. <laughs> That's Spider Man. I want to go take a drink. This is all B roll, so you, you go right ahead. What'd you call him? Bill Bailey? <laughs> Beta Ray Bill. Bill Bailey. Why don't you come on, Bill Bailey? <laughs> Beta Ray Bill. Beta Ray Bill. Beta Ray Bill. Beta Ray Bill. <clears throat> Beta Ray Bill. Beta Ray Bill. Spider Man. <laughs> Spider Man. <laughs> Every time we go to conventions, they always have the fun, big Lego pieces, whether it's like a Donkey Kong. Nope, not Donkey Kong. What's his name? King Kong. Okay, ready? Jesus. But, uh, okay, ready? No. <laughs> Rawr. There you go. Done. Stop it! So, I mean, I'm just going to turn it over to you. Tell us whatever you want about Clever Kaiju, all the best places to find it. All okay. Mention cool. the show, too. You got to mention the show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, hang on. It's it's too good. You're just casually talking. Casual conversation. <laughs>